A Fox Files follow-up tonight on a Columbia, Illinois woman diagnosed with cancer as a 19-year-old college student. The very treatments that could save her life would leave her infertile. Tonight, more than a decade later, she has beaten the cancer and is the proud parent of a new baby boy. I'm trying to decide if it's going to be better to put the crib here and the changing table there. When we visited Amy and Jason Tucker in February, they were planning a nursery. Now they have something special to put in it, a new baby boy, Grant Patrick. Dr. Michael DeRosa delivered Grant, all 6 pounds, 13 ounces, and 20 inches of him, on May 27th, three weeks early. We had the uh, had car seats and strollers, everything bought, but they were still boxed up. But um, it was the best feeling in the world. That's a miracle. And Dr. Sherman Stilber, who set the stage for this miracle years ago, I am so thrilled. Yeah, I'm, I, I mean, I'm just uh, walking with a bounce all the time about this. You see, Grant's story doesn't start at conception last fall, but with a decision Amy made more than a decade ago when she was diagnosed with Hodgkin's disease. She knew the chemotherapy would leave her infertile. I told her we could freeze her ovarian tissue and that would be her best bet. You know, what we were doing was completely experimental. We didn't even know if it was going to work. The animal work is very exciting. I told her it should work in humans. Well, I don't know. Amy decided to go for it. Dr. Silber removed some ovarian tissue and froze it in liquid nitrogen here at the Infertility Center of St. Louis at St. Luke's Hospital for more than 10 years. In January 2009, with Amy several years cancer-free, Dr. Silber thawed the tissue and transplanted it back into Amy. Obviously, it worked. It was a first. She's the very first one in the United States that uh, had her frozen ovary uh, cured of her cancer, the frozen ovary transferred back like almost 12 years later, and she's pregnant and delivered a healthy baby. And so um, the fact that it did work is just amazing, and it gives hope to all those other cancer patients out there that this can be an option, you know, for them as well. But the fact that insurance usually will not pay for this option is a sore point with Dr. Silver. If it's a consequence of cancer treatment, then the precedent is that insurance companies pay for that. But as we see in this denial of coverage from one insurance company to Dr. Silver, they see it as an infertility treatment. The services and procedures requested are excluded by the plan. This exclusion, infertility services, states treatment or services for infertility and any treatment or services related thereto. Dr. Silbert doesn't buy it. What I'm arguing is that a woman who has to go through treatment that's going to destroy her ovaries, but now has an opportunity to save those ovaries uh, as a consequence of her cancer treatment, that should be covered as part of her cancer. The policy may change down the road with more success stories like Amy. In the meantime, she and Jason are busy adjusting to their new roles as mom and dad. When we finally got home and, you know, there was no nurses there and we were taking care of the baby ourselves, that's when it really hit me. I think it's just been a blessing to us both. I mean, it's quite the miracle. I mean, from the first time that we laid eyes on him, you know, just, you just teared up and just knew that, like, this little life was going to mean so much to us, you know, and it, and it really has. Definitely has added to our life. A long journey, but little Grant made it all worthwhile. Congratulations to Amy and Jason. This procedure costs around $6,000 to $8,000, so if insurance won't pay for it, who does? St. Luke's Hospital issued this statement. For uninsured cancer patients who would like this fertility preservation procedure, St. Luke's provides financial assistance to those with an identified need. In addition, the physicians of the Infertility Center of St. Louis will waive their professional fees. And that's what they've been doing, but they argue that the insurance should pay for it just like they would with Dr. With Silver others. makes a very good point on that. Yeah, one comparison he makes is like they don't pay for, say, cosmetic mm -hmm. breast surgery, but they would pay for reconstruction surgery after a mastectomy due to cancer. Well, so. Interesting story. Great to see the outcome of all that. Talk. Yeah, it was a happy ending. <laughs>